A very good afternoon to everyone who are watching this program from India and a very good morning to those who are watching it from Spain. This is our 20, 75th live webinar on orthopedic principles. And today we have distinguished faculty, Professor Joan Minge from Barcelona, Spain. Joan is a knee surgery consultant working at the Waldi Hebron University Hospital. Since 2016, he's head of the department, which has 50 staff members and 30 residents. He's been the past president of the Catalan Orthopedic Society and also attached as professor at the Barcelona Autonomous University. He's a member of the ESCA Committee of Patellofemoral Instability. His research interest is about ACL surgery, patella instability, multi-ligamentous surgery, and navigated knee surgery. So today, it's my great honor to introduce you to Professor Joe Minge for our 75th live webinar on orthopedic principles. Over to you, Professor. Hi, uh, good morning. It's nine o'clock in Barcelona. Thank you very much, Haites, Dr. Gopalan, to invite me. It's a very pleasure. It's a pleasure to be here and to share my knowledge about trochoplasty with, with all the audience. Uh, I, I want to speak a little only four or five slides about our experience in COVID. Maybe it is your interest. I, this is, uh, I work in Barcelona. Barcelona, you, maybe you know, is in the northeast part of Spain. Is a, is a region is near France, in the, in the border of France. I work this, it's a very huge hospital, public hospital, more than 1,000 beds. There, this is named uh, Barcelona campus because it's uh, uh, integrated with university, it's in the top, it's not, uh, you, you can see old, but it's, it's there. It is a little bit piece of this. There's a research area, this, eh? and there are three hospitals, children and maternity hospital, the general hospital, and this is my hospital. It's on uh, our only orthopedic hospital. This is, a, we have a, a very lucky because all this hospital is orthopedics. This orthopedic hospital also is a polytraumatic center. Now will be a new heliport here in, in the top of the building. And this is a polytrauma center and a spinal cord injuries reference center, and also a, Bar a Barnes reference center of Catalonia. In this period, now, now we are uh, well, we are doing now elective surgery and we are totally recovered of coronavirus, but our hospital, this is the fifth floor of my uh, hospital, orthopedic hospital. This was the physio room, and this physio room became an ICU uh, from critical patients. Did all the patient, all the, hospital transform, you can see the pipes of the oxygen and, and that. This is the fifth floor, this is, a, is the floor dedicated all, also only to education. And now is a, a ICU for critical patient of around 80 uh, beds. This, this transformation of our hospital was praised by the World Health, uh, Health Organization. Dr. Bruce Elward visit our hospital and uh, and says that we are doing a, a heroic uh, work, no? And we are very happy with this, with our work and with the collaborative. We learned that we need to be collaborative. Uh, our residents and staff members of orthopedics donate their unused phone endos to the medical service. Like says uh, Dr. Mohit Bandari, that is a, a friend of us, we need to be co collaborative in research and in in trade and in treatment different uh, aspects no like coronavirus we start to treat a lot of patients with uh, hip fractures we dialect, we cancel all the elective surgery but with the, a lot of patients with uh, hip fractures are around two or three cases a day 60 cases per month we, we believe that is we need to to do a high quality prompt care of these patients and we in the start of the pandemic we uh, clarify the coronavirus status in every patient. This was the, uh, a very important for us and it's the key important factor. And this is our hospital. We treat more than 2,050 uh, patients. Uh, and it was the hospital that treat more patients in our region. Look, see, you can see this. And it's time to look back and analyze what happened, but it's time to, and very important to look to the future. 
And uh, I will start with uh, the focus of this of this talk, that is patelloformal instability. Well, instability, uh, patelloformal instability is a multifactorial uh, cause, no? and you need to analyze and to be very systematic. But at different degrees of dysplasia, you can see in maybe every patient, in 85% of patients, some degree of dysplasia, like high degree, from this, like you can, this is a, a, a type D uh, dysplasia, but some different levels in, in almost every patient. But you need to be very systematic. You need to analyze major factors of instability and minor factors of instability. In all the patients, there's a rupture of the patellofemoral ligament, but you need to rule out trochlear dysplasia to be very systematic. You need to rule out patella alta. You need to uh, analyze the TTG distance and the patellar tilt, but also you need to analyze femoral antiversion, tibial external rotation, general curvatum, and general album. For this, you need to be uh, a very systematic X-ray protocol, CT protocol, and also maybe uh, MRI protocol. I, I will don't speak with MRI, uh, on, for with uh, um, X-ray and, and CT. My preferred index to rule out uh, patella alta is the Caton de Champs index. You can use different index, but I use this Caton de Champs. I use a 30 degree axial view, uh, the merchant's view, and the cutoff of patellar tear is 20 degrees, more than 20 degrees. This is also with the uh, X-ray. You need to, to do a very strict per field. Isn't it, this, in this case, it's not very strict, uh, but and you do need to analyze crossing sign. This is, you can, uh, to analyze the deep, deep of the trochlear groove. You need to analyze the spur, the supratrochlear spur, uh, and you need to analyze the double contour. Double contour is the shadow of the hypoplastic, hypoplastic uh, in medial condyle. With these three radiological things, you must uh, classify, classify the, uh, the degree of dysplasia. We need uh, to focus in the B and D because this is the indications of the trochoplasty and you need to analyze the supertocular spur, crossing sign, and also the double contour that is a shadow ending below the crossing sign. Also, you need to have a, to do a, a CT, you need to analyze. Look, this is a normal case and, and uh, uh, type D dysplasia, look the incongruity of, the, of this uh, articulation. And you need to, in every case, to bilateral, you need to analyze both knee. You can see this high degree, that also a type B, no? this incongruence. Also, you can see some degree of uh, bone changes and the indirect ch changes of the mm, small fragments uh, in the patellofemoral insertion area in the patella. But not only trochlear dysplasia. I say before, you need to be systematic. You need to analyze the distance, TT, TG distance, okay? the, the cutoff is 20. And also you need to rule out femoral antiversion with this line in the posterior condyles and the, and the, and the, and the hip. No? More than 25 degrees, maybe you need to do a femoral derotational external osteotomy. We use, a, a, we follow the Lion School in Surgery, it's a French uh, school that is, is very near to Barcelona and there's a lot of influence of the school to Catalonia or to Spain. And you need, you need to use a la carte surgery. If there, no, no, if there are, there are in gross anatomies abnormalities, you only use a medial patellofemoral ligand reconstruction. Maybe in 80% of the cases you can do this reconstruction alone. But if the TT distance is more than 20, you need to, to do and, and there are lateralized tibial tubercle, you need to do anterior medialization uh, technique like Fulkerson's technique or a lambda triliac technique. If there is patella alta, you need to distalizing the um, tibial tuberosity. If there are a lateral tibial tilt more than 20 degrees, say so this is the cutoff, you need, a, you need to do a lateral retinacular lengthening. If there, you, uh, you are in a genovalgus, you use the femorotibial mechanical angle more than five or six degrees or valgus, you need to add a distal femoral barosociotomy to the 
MPFL uh, reconstruction. And if you have a thermal antiversion more than 25 degrees, you need to, do, to add a thermal derotation osteotomy. And if you have a dysplasia, tip type B or D, maybe you need to, not in, in every case, but in some cases, you need to add a trochoplasty. Trochoplasty are, uh, uh, they are described different techniques, but uh, in summary, there are a thick flap, thick flap described by De Jure in 1987. The thick flap, there is a relatively big uh, flap. This is the cartilaginous osseous flap. You can see this uh, more than five millimeter, millimeters of, of bone, and this is not, not flexible. For this reason, you need to cut and produce with a, with a scalpel or with a, a chisel, a new groove. Huh? Also, you need to remove bone uh, uh, below the flap, no? and you need to fix with different uh, kind of that we explained before. No? But in the thin flap, there is a small, um, a small, a small uh, it's, it's thinness and it's flexible, and you, you don't need to cut, to cut like this, and also, is flexible and you need to fix. Yeah? This is the thin flap described by Berater. Thick flap, thin flap. Sometimes uh, I prefer, I, I learned the thick flap, but sometimes I'm doing the thin flap. But in I will show uh, the technique of the thick flap. There's also described another kind of, of trochoplastic resection. The, and the goal is uh, to uh, descend this trochlear, trochlear, uh, supertrochlear spur and to uh, diminish the contact pressure of the patellofemoral joint. Indications. If you see this paper uh, right by John Fulkerson, is a very uh, uh, important person from the patellofemoral study group from in, in, in the United States, this, this um, also says that trochoplasty is an European procedure. Uh, it's very common in Europe to do this. Not common, but maybe more common than uh, in the in the states, no. In general, a single patellofemoral reconstruction is enough. In maybe eighty percent of the cases, you need to know that trochoplasty is an interticular surgery. And do you have a risk of arthrofibrosis? You need to explain to the patients. I will see our uh, case series. We have two cases, but that solved with only a, a simple uh, scope. But you need to know this. Eh? that instead of the trochoplasty, the patellar incongruency remains. This is, this is true, and this is a... Uh, and the indications for this, this author, Fulkerson, is that they need to uh, look the patient, not only to, you have a BED, you need to do a, a, a trochoplasty, no. You need to, to see the patient as the entire picture, and you need to analyze the J-sign, supertrochlear spur, high degree dysplasia, and also hyperlaxity. Other authors, uh, the indication is B and D, dysplasia, but also supertrochlear spur, more than five degrees. It's a quantification of the supertrochlear spur. Not all the supertrochlear spur are the same. And also clinical signs. Contraindications, A or C dysplasia or advanced patellofemoral arthritis. What are you doing? You use clinical and radiological criteria. criteria. Clinical criteria in revision surgery, the patient then that fails the, the prior reconstruction, patient with J curve, instability in flexion. This means instability in more than 30 degrees, and also radiological criteria. I will show this, this uh, uh, video here. This is a patient, sorry, this is a patient that has a Uh, uh, you can see the J sign yeah? when the flexion is more than 30 degrees. Is a preview, you have previous surgery, and we uh, maybe uh, undermine uh, a trochlear dysplasia. And this is a case of that we are uh, adding a, a trochoplasty. What are the principles of the trochoplasty? There are two goals. The first goal is remove the trochlear offset. The supratrochlear spurs in types B and D acts like a, sky, a ski ramp, huh? but also 
The second goal is decrease the patellofemoral contact pressure. Maybe if you, are, if you do a um, trocheplasty, I say before the, the incongruence of the two uh, articular surface are present because you don't, you don't do anything to the patella, but you decrease the patellofemoral contact pressure. And maybe this can save the cartilage. Yes, there are two goals. You can see it's important when I do, do a, do a trochoplasty to do a picture in this view. It's like, like an axial view. You can see the, the shape, eh? a convex shape. Eh? This is another case. You can see a flat surface. I'm doing a photo every, in every case like this because after the, the trochoplasty, I um, do a second photo to compare because sometimes you need to have a uh, an image or a picture or a photo that you can uh, analyze the degree of correction. You can see also this articular damage all in, in, in some cases, no? like this, the cartilage damage. In every case, you can see cartilage damage. Eh? You can, uh, what are doing, we remove instable, instable contral flaps to the subcontral bone. And depending on if the patient has symptoms or not, sometimes if the lesion is less than one centimeter, we are doing less. In general, we only divide instable uh, flap chondrals, chondral flaps, but in general, nothing more. The steps of the trochoplasty. Trochoplasty has different steps. The first step is the periosteum and synovium dissection around the cartilage because you need to, uh, to cut this periosteum and, uh, to, to, and to go to the, to the bone. Then with a chisel, you need to mark the periphery. Also, you need to draw the new sulcus that in general is lateralized. In general, 10 millimeters, but it depends. It depends on the TTGT because the trochoplasty have the advantage that you not only it reshapes the trochlea, you also lateralize the trochlea. This is the same that medializes the TT, tibial tuberosity. Indu is the indirect management of the TTGT. You can do two, uh, two uh, actions. Huh? Also, you need to draw the limit of the patellofemoral tro trochlea. This is the trochlea. This is the limit of the femoral tibial uh, articular surface. You need to draw it to um, and to have a, a whole picture of the trochlea. The second step is draw, draw with, with pen, with surgical pen, the, the new sulcus. The third step is resection the supertrochlear spool. This, I learned this technique in, in 2013 of a, a very expert in Spain, Dr. Vicente Sanchez Alfonso, maybe you know, is a member of the patellofemoral a uh, study group uh, with Fulkerson, and you need to remove this, this five millimeters of excess of, of a spur, five or more. Right? For this, we can use different instruments. You, need, you can elevate with a curet, also you can use curet, uh, speed bars, power speed bars, and to resect this. You can see the, the new sulcus, the old sulcus in this flat, that and also does this, the limit of the trochlea and femoral tibial surfaces. Is a, you can help with, with palpation of, of, your, of your finger because you can note the vibration of the high speed board to avoid penetration eh, to the cartilage. But also we have instruments. I use now this instrument in, in, every, case, in every case. At the beginning, I don't use it, but it is an instrument similar than one described by the jour, but this is from Artrex. I don't know if you have experience with, or you work with this uh, American company, but you, you, you use a lot, this company, and they have a, this, uh, a set, a specific set of trochoplastia. And this is, um, there's an offset of three or five millimeter offset between the tip of this and, and the tip of the drill. This is a drill, and if you want to do a thick flap, you use this offset. 
and a fifth flap, you use the three millimeters offset. This uh, is a video. Uh, this is the speed. You need to, to use a speed bar with a long arm because you need to go from here to here. You need to resect the super tuck less pull from here to here. And you need to have this design. And also you need to, I will show a video because you need to get a flexible flap because if you do, can see a flexible flap is difficult to fix and you and you can have failures to the fixation. Uh, another step to make the sulcus. We, we draw before the sulcus, but you need to make the sulcus. The sulcus is made between five or 10 la, uh, lateral sulcus. I use a scalpel. You can use also uh, a chisel, but the, the ideal is a new scalpel number 24 uh, and you impact here with a with a mallet and this is the creation of the new sulcus 10 millimeters lateralization from the old sulcus you not only need to to make a sulcus in the cartilage you need to dip the sulcus in the in the osseous this is also in a specific instrument in the artrex set a special curve chisel to make this big deep sulcus fixation you, i use a v configuration with three threads you can see here three sets of reabsorbable number two shooter with bike grill shooter this shooter disappears in, in in two or three months if you do a a, a second look arthroscopy scope you can you can see right, this uh, but you need to use a reabsorbable and to avoid uh, marks or uh, to, to have problems to the cartilage. You can use different anchors. I use the swift lock or the push lock, but it doesn't matter, different anchors. Uh, I prefer the push lock, it's also from Artrex. And you can see the decrease of the, of the cartilage uh, and the, the disappear of the supertrocular spore. And this is the final configuration with the V shape. Uh, and uh, you can see the three uh, threads of bigreal. You can use another uh, option, fixation option. I don't have experience of this, but Laparat describes that the, the fixation with screws, absorbable screws. These are sense uh, with a thick flap technique, not in the, in the thin flap. But also you can use more cheaper options like intraosseous suture. It's easy to uh, to do this, and also metallic staples uh, that this make handmade with a uh, number one uh, key wire that you can bend like a, a U, and you can cut uh, and make this uh, this U, U shape staples and you fix. Is that doesn't I, I use. In some cases that you have problems with uh, with uh, anchors. In relation to the patellofemoral reconstruction, you know is the main static stabilizer between zero and thirty degrees. Now we are doing only uh, this kind of V configuration because I don't use transverse tunnels because the risk of patellar fracture. We have two patients with patellar fracture. We avoid to use a transverse fracture. And also, we avoid to use um, uh, implants, screws. I prefer don't use anything. For me, it's better, cheaper, and better. And in every case, or in general, the first option is to use the gracilis tendon autograph. In every case, also, we, you use the shuttle's point with an with interoperative C arm. You can see here the tunnels. You can do the tunnels in the top or in the border, depending if the patients have a tilt. If the patient have a tilt, I do the V shape, but in the in the front, in the in the surface. If not, I do the, the tunnels here. And this these photos I show I put here because I will show the the, um, the archotomy because I cut in the medial third and expose the bone. This is useful for exposure. This cleans the, 
quadriceps tendon in, in this area and is free to do the tunnels. And also, if you want, at the end, you can reef the, the capsular and you can do a reefing and add a reefing to the patellofemoral reconstruction. In cases of revision or in cases that you have problems with transverse tunnels and problems with bone stock, I use the quadriceps tendon. The, uh, the rectus anterior, uh, is a, you can easy, easy to dissect and to put here in the second layer between the capsule and the first layer in cases of revision. I say before, I avoid transverse transpatellar tunnels. We have, in this case, it's too, too high and with, with a fracture, but we have two cases with totally fractured uh, uh, patella and avoid to use transverse tunnels and also I avoid to use implants. More cheaper, say before, and, and I think better. Our series, we start in 2013. Now we have more than, than 20 cases, but these are the cases of more than one year or two years, maybe. Uh, is a is a is a old revision that we did. It, there's not uh, gross abnormalities. There is not TTTGT uh, more than twenty. This is the the average. There are no patella alta, and there's no patellar tilt. In these cases of no gross abnormalities, and with a de jure type D or B, we uh, indicate a trochoplasty. We have only two complications from arthrofibrosis. You need to. Uh, to explain to the patients, but now the orthophys was the first patient because maybe for fair uh, to, mobi to, to the free mobilization of the knee, but now if you have a good fixation, this is in, in LD case, this in, in, with the new implants, it's easy to, to have a good uh, fi fixed uh, flap. You don't need to, to use braces and you don't need, you don't need to use uh, immobilization, only crutches and to protect weight bearing. But if you do this, maybe the risk of orthofibrosis decreases. In our series, the mean improvement of, of Kuhala score uh, are an average of 20, around 25, from 49 to 75 uh, uh, points. This is a, a, a good uh, improvement. You can see a control. You, in every case, I did a TC and MRI control. You can see the steotomy eh? and the molded trochoplasty, the, the, the molded groove. Our series is similar to the other series published in the literature. You can see the improvement of 20, near 25 points in the Kuhala score, similar, similar you know, of, the, of the others. And the complications are similar. Also, arthrofibrosis, you need to to be aware of the arthrofibrosis. Another case series with different numbers. In general, few cases. There are series that more cases, but uh, the results are similar. A satis uh, good satisfaction rate. The Kuhala score improved similar to our series, like this. Also this Kuhala score average from 50 to 75, similar. Uh, Kuhala score improved from 40 45 to 81 is similar in every cases. In this systematic review, did by Stefano Sapagnini, is from published in 2019. This is a, a, a systematic review where the principal variable was reluxation. Also, she uh, studied PROMS, Kuhala score, IKDC, and complications. They select 31 papers with the PRISMA tool. And the requirements to be selected was more than one year follow-up and a series more than 10 patients. Uh, the results or the, uh, is that there's no difference if you add a trochoplasty or without trochoplasty, if you look the entire patients. But if you uh, compare high degree dysplasia with uh, without trochoplasty and, and uh, uh, um, less degree dysplasia, AC, no? the difference is, is, is uh, significant. No? Uh, the, the conclusion is if you have a 
a high degree dysplasia, the risk of uh, reluxation if you don't do a trochoplastia is higher. But you need to know that both techniques, techniques with or without trochoplastia, both improve uh, uh, outcomes, but trochoplastia have more complications. For the take home message, you need to manage the patellofemoral instability with a systematic, you need to be very systematic. You need to have a very uh, X-ray protocol with very well done uh, X-rays. You need to do an individualized surgery, a la carte surgery, like the Lyon, Lyon School, French. The trochoplastia in high grade dysplasia, BRD, but you need on, you not need to look only the X-ray. You need also use clinical criteria, G-curve, uh, hyperlaxity, etc. It's a technical demanding. Uh, you need a learning curve. And maybe we need more evidence to uh, re redefine or to tune the indications of uh, trochoplastic. And this is my last uh, slide. Thank you very much for your kind invitation and for your attention. Thank you, Professor. Uh, that was a fantastic lecture from your side. Uh, there are a couple of questions that have come up. Uh, one is, what is the chance cartilage necrosis when you do a trochleoplasty procedure? Uh, I, when I said before, uh, we did, um, uh, in every case, a CT, co a CT control uh, uh, CT and also a MRI. In general, you can see uh, some irregularities, but uh, we don't have patients with residual pain. In general, if we have but the follow-up of our series is around two years, we all, or depending on the patient. We start in 2013. This is a concert of the trochoplasty. Uh, for this, we select trochoplasty in, in uh, not in only B and D. B and D reluxation and, and cases that you need to, uh, in very specific cases, no? But in our experience, uh, only there are uh, abnormalities that you can see in the CT control or in the MRI, but without pain. In general, pain associated in our experience eh, with, with these patients, in general, are with mistakes in the uh, insertion point of the femoral insertion point of the medial patellofemoral ligament, more than the arthritic changes. But is a, a concern about this technique. Do you think that we need a very long-term follow-up of trochleoplasty to really say that uh, this is a very, very safe and efficient procedure. Yes. We don't know really if this technique is very safe or not, because we don't have uh, enough time. Maybe now there's a, a increase in the indications, but we need to uh, redefine in the future and select only the very specific cases uh, but this is a complex surgery that uh, a little bit uh, artistic surgery. Now there are more instruments that help uh, to do this, but uh, not uh, all the people can do this. Not, not for the complexity, because you need to know and to, uh, you, there's a learning, learning curve. And then you need to select, select, bury the patients and to bury caution, uh, caution with very caution. And how many percentage of your patients who have patellofemoral instability require a trochleoplasty? Very few. Only uh, I'm looking for clinical criteria. J-curve. If you don't have J-curve, you, you don't need in general because J-curve, um, uh, you can see J-curve in uh, this high dysplasia and also patella alta or the combination of, of both. And you need to say J-curve ideally in patients with uh, reluxation, this you can consider it also, uh, and with, with a very uh, high degree dysplasia. For this, I only I not only use the classification of the jour because it's only an X-ray, I'm looking for in the MRI, in the axial view, the CT, uh, analyze if they, there are a TTG, TT, TG distance more than 20 because when you do the trochoplasty, you can lateralize the sulcus and you, you can treat the two 
things at the same at the same time. Um, the 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 response is uh, the answer is uh, in very few patients, very very selected patients. Uh, suppose you have say hundred patients with uh, patellar femoral instability. What percentage of patients would require an MPFL reconstruction? How many would require an MPFL reconstruction with a tibial tubercle transfer? And how many of them would require a trochleoplasty? A rough estimate. In percentage of patients, uh, maybe five percent of the patients need a trochleoplasty, maybe. And TTGT, it, it, it depends. It depends of the patient, but. In general, in 80% of the case, cases, we did only uh, medial patellofemoral reconstruction alone, in 80%, maybe, around maybe. And if, if you have an abnormal TTTG, you would always do a medial TT transfer, is it? No, if, if there's a, a normal TTGT only, you dip the sulcus, uh, maybe you, you can, because in general, if the patient have a 15 uh, TTGT distance and you need to do a trochoplastia, you only need to move the sulcus five millimeters or nothing. It depends of the shape. If you have a flat surface, only two in the same, in the middle. But if you have a, a type D, because you have a, a, a medial hypoplastic condyle, in, in these cases, in every case, you need to do a, a lateralize the sulcus. Uh, suppose you have a patient with a DIGOR type A, and if you have a TTTG distance of, say, 25, what would be your approach? Yeah, no, I, I modified that. I do a TBL to transfer uh, uh, about 10 because you, you need to do. Yes, yes, I do. With the 8, I never do a trochoplasty. Trochoplasty is only with selected cases, B and D, and with cl clinical signs of, of a very instant instable uh, patellofemoral joint. What about Dijor C? Sorry? Dijor C, C, C types. Ah, in C types. Also, uh, in general, we need to, because in C types, there is, there is no supratrochlear spur. The goal is the, the trochoplasty, because sometimes in the trochoplasty, uh, you, can, you can reshape a perfect, it's impossible to reshape a perfect trochlear. But the second goal that I said before is to decrease the patellofemoral joint. No? This uh, saves the cartilage. And uh, in type C, uh, there's not supratrochlear score. And there's the second goal, you can do the second goal. For the, in the reason, is not indicated to a trochoplasty because the, uh, there's no benefits enough uh, with complications. The, the balance of complication is, is not, is not uh, is not correct, and in these cases, you need to rule out different different aspects because you sometimes you need to rule out femoral antiversion, genovalgus, and you need to do a la carte surgery. You need to be very systematic and rule out until you de decide what factor. Maybe people have three factors: no patella alta, a valgus knee, and you need to define what what is the cutoff of every of every. And sometimes uh, do. Uh, the less complex, no? But we are trying to do the uh, a la carte surgery and to treat all the gross uh, abnormality, gross abnormalities. Thank you, Professor. I think that was a very fantastic lecture and uh, there are no more questions. Uh, we, we really had a really great experience listening to the technique of trochleoplasty that you have mentioned. And I'm sure that's going to benefit thousands of surgeons all over the world. It was really a great honor to be with us. Mm -hmm. Thank you once again, uh, Professor Minge, and we look forward for more lectures from yours. Thank you very much, Hitesh. Dr. Kaplan, you are a very active professor. Uh, you are a friend of, of us in our hospital and in Spain and in Catalonia. You, uh, I expect your visit in the future or maybe a lecture for you. I expect that you're uh, we, uh, our relationship uh, will increase in the future and to have relation with both countries. Thank you very much, Professor. Stay safe. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. A pleasure. Pleasure, Prof.